17 FPV drones built from cheap plastic, scavenged parts, and $89 AI-controlled autopilots had flown six relentless hours, cutting through 750 kilometers of enemy airspace. No GPS, no guidance, no fear. As they closed in on a massive Russian fuel depot, a radar sweep suddenly exposed their position. Within moments, what had been protected by half a billion dollars worth of S-400s and Panzer batteries faced a swarm that cost less than a single missile. What happened next sent shockwaves across Russia, because this strike, planned for months in silence, delivered a blow every Russian citizen felt. At 3 o'clock a.m. in Western Russia, 17 Ukrainian FPV drones surrounded Kinev fuel depot like hunters closing in. They have flown for six hours nonstop, crossing 750 kilometers of enemy airspace with no GPS, no interlink between them, and zero human control for the last 30 minutes. In just a few moments, their onboard AI systems are poised to prove how spare parts pieced together from Taman can outmatch a $500 million air defense network and sideline a nuclear bomber fleet. The lead drone thermal sensor locks onto heat signatures of the fuel storage site. This sensor streams data to a neural model trained on 10,000 satellite images of the Kinef fuel depot. The AI does not merely recognize the complex, it interprets it, tank layouts, pipeline routes, and everything else. Through the noisy 1,080 pixels, four huge circles shine white hot against the cold ground. The AI's edge detection routine traces each tank, labels them, and performs a temperature check. Each of the 17 FPV drones runs the identical analysis independently. No central control, no consensus loop, just 17 identical processors reaching 17 matching conclusions. This decentralized reasoning extends beyond identifying the objective. Each drone tags its approach path with an ID. It's like locusts swarm at the same target from slightly different positions. Close enough to hit hard, not so close they collide on the way in. As the FPVS near the base, the cell signal shows a single bar. At this range from the Ukrainian border, the repurposed Russian sims struggle to stay linked with the towers. In 30 seconds, when the drones descend below 50 meters for final approach, they become fully self-governing and locked onto their targets. The crews are about to become spectators to their own mission. Each FPV's Chinese autopilot board costs $89 on Temu, executes collision avoidance computations 10 times per second. Ultrasonic rangefinders form an invisible two-meter cushion around each airframe. When wind pushes them together, micro-corrections keep them apart. It's worked so far, it just needs to hold for five more minutes. At 10 kilometers, the formation reshapes. What began as a loose cluster snaps into an attack grid. Suddenly, Ukrainian drones are forming into a perfect V pattern. Only this is not about efficiency. It's about maximizing damage with minimal interference. The AI has computed optimal impact angles based on tank construction. Seven FPVs climb to 80 meters to dive onto tank roofs where the steel is weakest. Five hold 50 meters to strike the upper shells where vapors gather. Five drop to 30 meters to target lower bands where structural construction is more fragile. At 301, the S-400 radar beam scans overhead, passing through the space the FPVS occupied two seconds ago. The controller sees nothing. The drones are below his sensor horizon, hidden by the Earth's curvature. But the night is unnaturally quiet. No civilian traffic, no military flights, not even birds. In the lead drone memory, a simple timer ticks down. At preset coordinates, the autopilot assumes full control. No human can cancel. No jamming can mislead it. Point nose at tank 4. Hold 42 meters per second. Detonate on impact. At 302, the cell signal drops to zero bars. 17 UAVs simultaneously switch to full autonomy. 17 warheads committed to their objectives. 17 control loops that can no longer be stopped by anything. As the UAVs head toward angles, the fuel storage site sits protected by an air defense network that costs more than Ukraine's entire UAV program. The outer layer is the S-400 battery, sited three kilometers northwest of the depot. This $500 million system can nominally engage ballistic missiles in space, stealth aircraft at 400 kilometers. The 92N6E fire control radar emits enough energy to microwave a chicken at 10 kilometers. But physics does not care about brochure claims. At 50 meters altitude, the S-400 cannot see them until 28 kilometers away, and that's in ideal conditions. Tonight, with ground clutter and temperature inversions refracting radar waves, the range drops to 20 kilometers. Radars struggle looking down through clutter. 
buildings, trees, and thermal pockets scatter the beam. By the time the FPVS appear on scope, they have under five minutes until impact. Enough for a single fighter, not nearly enough for a swarm you can barely detect. The S-400's computer churns through 10,000 aircraft and missile signatures, an F-15 at 50 miles, an air-to-surface missile, no problem. But a small quadcopter with the return of a large bird at the speed of a pigeon, not in the database. The system flags it as unknown, low priority. Four Panzer S-1 units encircle the depot like guard dogs. Each costs $15 million and bristles with 57 E-6 missiles and twin 30mm guns. Promo clips show them swatting cruise missiles with ease. What the clips don't show, the minimum radar cross-section for effective intercept is 0.1 square meters. The OSA UAVs have approximately 0.01 square meters, 10 times smaller. Hitting a target like that is like trying to tag a mosquito with a hunting rifle. Even if the Panzer's IR imager spots a UAV, the guidance solution is a mess. The 57E6 needs continuous radar illumination, but painting a plastic airframe is like spotlighting a black cat in a coal pit. The command link drops, re-establishes, drops again. Proximity fuses tuned for metal often fail to detect composites. The Russians know UAVs are a problem. That's why Pole 21 GPS jammers surround strategic sites, creating electromagnetic domes meant to send Western drones astray. The system broadcasts bogus GPS signals that make receivers believe they're somewhere over the Pacific. But the FPV's navigate systems are from the 20th century, magnetic compass, accelerometers, and dead reckoning. The jamming that would disable a million-dollar surveillance platform means nothing to these flying drones. You can't jam what isn't there. At this base, a dozen round tanks, each 20 meters in diameter, hold 2,000 tons of fuel apiece. Designers in 1962 placed them 30 meters apart, close enough to share equipment, far enough that one bomb wouldn't destroy two tanks. They imagined B-52s dropping iron bombs, not UAV swarms with shaped warheads. In the control room, the automated firefighting system looks impressive. Green indicators, 50,000 liters of foam, deluge heads every 10 meters, and thermal sensors everywhere. What the lights don't reveal, expired concentrate, clogged nozzles, and a system built for a single tank blaze, not simultaneous fires. Now, 15 kilometers out and closing. On scopes across the base, clutter, migratory birds make false returns, temperature layers bend waves into phantoms. Somewhere in that noise, 17 real threats hold formation. Invisible, not because they are stealthy, but because they are too simple to see. At 3.03, a radar operator watches a contact resolve on his Panzer S1 display. Eight kilometers out, 50 meters altitude, 151 kilometers per hour. Too slow for a missile, too fast for a bird, too low for anything expected. He slews the electro-optical turret and maxes the zoom. The imager shows a small hot spot against cold ground. Four rotors and a central fuselage, definitely a FPV drone, smaller than anything in his catalog. Then another and another. 17 contacts across a three kilometer front. Range ticks down, seven kilometers, six kilometers, five kilometers. Impact in 130 seconds. He doesn't wait for clearance. His thumb drops to auto-engage, bypassing safety interlocks. The first 57 E6 missile erupts from its launcher. The solid rocket motor drives it to Mach 2.8 in three seconds, streaking toward the lead drone. But the radar return flickers like a dying bulb. The command receiver struggles to hold lock on a target that barely exists in RF. At 2.1 kilometers, the proximity fuse makes the recalculation looking for RCS signals from any objects in air. It refuses to detonate. The million ruble missile flashes past, missing by three meters. The drone wobbles in the supersonic wake but flies on. The battery fires again, but the FPV executes a pre-programmed pop-up. Climb 20 meters in two seconds, then dive back to 30 meters. The guidance computer, expecting predictable aircraft behavior, loses track entirely. Another million rubles sailed into the night. Across the depot, three other Panzer batteries open fire. The sky turns pyrotechnic as missiles chase drones. Tracers from 30 millimeter guns draw golden arcs, but hitting a drone-sized target at three kilometers with an autocannon. Rounds self-destruct after four seconds, leaving black puffs that mark failure. The Tor M2 activates its phased array radar, but faces the same problem. The FPVs are below its minimum engagement envelope. Rated to track 48 targets, it can barely hold one. 
contacts flicker like fireflies, never solid enough for a weapon's grade track. At 3.06, luck intervenes. A fuse catches a drone broadside. The warhead bursts, 50,000 tungsten fragments shredding the air. The drone disintegrates in an orange flare. 16 remain, now inside three kilometers, inside minimum missile range. With only twin 30 millimeter cannons left and those aimed toward their own fuel site, one stray round could do the enemy's job. The formation reforms with machine precision. The remaining FPVs fan wider, forcing defenders to spread fire. Some climb to attack angles, others skim the deck. The swarm has lost one member but kept its aim. Control loops don't mourn, they recompute. At 307, defensive fire slackens, missiles spent, barrels glowing. Hit probability, single digits. At exactly 308, the lead airframe strikes tank four. A 3.2 kilogram warhead shaped like an inverted copper cone pierces eight millimeters of steel roof as if it were foil. 0.3 seconds later, it detonates deep in the vapor space above 2,000 tons of fuel. A shockwave races at 2,800 meters per second through the fuel air cloud. This isn't a movie fireball. It's a detonation that turns liquid into expanding gas faster than the tank can contain. The roof becomes a 15-ton steel discus, sailing 200 meters before crashing down. Walls peel back. A torrent of burning fuel floods the berm, built for leaks, not ruptures. Within seconds, flames reach manifolds to tank five. Steel pipes rated for 20 atmospheres become fuses, leading to the next blast. 10 seconds later, the second FPV hits tank one, then another drone, tank seven, then another, tank 12. Each strike is timed to maximize cascading failure. The depot's automated system kicks in, pushing foam at 10,000 liters per minute. But it's like spitting at a volcano. 90 seconds later, the foam is gone, barely coating a quarter of the burning surface. At 100 meters, radiant flux reaches 50 kilowatts per square meter, enough to ignite wood. Fire engines from angles can't get closer than 500 meters before paint blisters. Thermometers peg out as crews watch helplessly. Underground piping keeps feeding the blaze from intact tanks, arteries to a heart. Emergency shutoff valves designed in the 1960s fail as seals melt, adding thousands more tons of fuel. At 318, Tank 6 suffers a BLEVE, -E, boiling liquid, expanding vapor explosion. It doesn't just burn, it detonates. This isn't ordinary fuel. It's the specialized blend used for TU-160 and TU-95MS strategic bomber ops. Additives that prevent freezing at 50,000 feet make substitution impossible. For the price of a small Moscow apartment, Ukraine just reached 750 kilometers and grounded Russia's nuclear bomber force. Every airbase commander from Russia is doing their math now. If plastic FPVs can fly 600 kilometers and Moscow is 700 kilometers away, what now? Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more frontline stories every week.